This one's got a little bit of a lopy start. Let's get under the seat and see what the issue is. All right, guys, here we have a 95 Yamaha G14 gas. This one here has a cranking issue. Uh, the customer describes it as a flat spot when starting. We're gonna get the seat off. I already know what the issue is. I've already been under the seat, but I just wanted to bring you guys along so we can show you what we're doing. Right. Oop, I tripped over the light. Great. All right, let's pop the seat off of this one. This is actually a really nice looking cart for a 95 G14. I've seen them come in where they're just absolutely terrible. Okay, so the first thing I see, I don't know if you guys have noticed that yet, but we have a wheelchair battery, a UPS battery, a battery that's entirely too small for this cart. Uh, I'll bring you in a little bit closer, but let me get the key in it and we'll crank it over and I'll let you hear the noise it's making. If I could find my keys, didn't it? I can start this car. All right, now the engine's cold. It is cold in here. It's probably somewhere in the 30s. I don't know. It is what it is. Uh, but this is this happens hot or cold. So I'm gonna find the neutral position. Now there is a, a hole that lines up on the shifter that you can shove a pin in and it'll lock it in neutral, but we don't really need to worry about it right now. But this is what it sounds like when it tries to crank over. I'll make a liar out of me. Okay, there. Now, see? Okay. That is so weird. When I when the customer dropped it off, there. Okay. The belt's loose too. So there's a couple little things, nothing nothing major. I'll just choke it from here cuz But the way he described it was a flat spot. Choke thing is stuck. Let's see if it. Okay, there it goes. Hear how it's lumpy? Where it's it's getting stuck and hung up on the compression stroke. Okay, now the battery is actually getting weak from cranking it over. But they the customer said that that's what they've experienced. It would just sometimes work, sometimes not. Here, okay, so now it's lumping. It's not the right size battery. Let me see if I can get you in here a little closer with some light and show you a little better as to what's going on here. So as you can see, that battery there is a deep cycle battery, technically. It's not a cranking amps battery. It's designed for like small solar systems. And I mean small solar systems. It's capable of operating like a 500 watt inverter, no problem, for a short period of time. Uh, it's not really, it's not really the greatest gig, but you can see, see how it just lumps over right on the compression stroke. Oh, and it's dead. Now the battery's dead. But that, that, that battery there is not designed for it. It's not the factory battery. The battery that this cart calls for is called a group 24 and that's the size of the battery. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna, we have a group 24 here, we got an X side right here. Here we go. So the, I use, typically I'll use crowns. I'll use X-Sides. Not a huge fan of X-Side, but right now <laughs> it's really hard getting stuff. So this is what we're going to pop in it. And then because of the way the terminals are on that cart, what we're going to do is we're going to actually change out, or we're going to install these clips here. We're going to put one on the positive and the negative. So that way we have these bolt heads here that we can put our ring terminals on, which will make it a lot nicer, in my opinion. This is the preferred method for myself. I like doing it this way just because it's so much better, um, in my opinion. But you could do it however you want. You could do different style clamps, just as long as you'd make them tight and they're clean. So we'll hit these terminals here with a brush and clean them up before we put it in the cart. All right, so here's how I, I'm not gonna clean these because these are brand new, but this is how I clean the battery posts. I was like, I don't like typically using an impact for this, 
but currently it's it's all I have. I don't know where the battery is for my other drill, so we're going to do this. But if you're gentle, it's not a big deal. Actually, I could put this on low, and it should be good. Two bars left. Yeah, so... If you use a regular drill and you don't have an impact, it's it actually will it'll work a lot better. See how nice and clean it makes those, and it's quick. Doesn't hurt your wrists. So that's that's pretty much it. And they're nice and clean now. It, that this brush is really nice. E Trailer sells these things. I buy them basically by the carton because I use I use them all the time. All right, let's go get this bad boy in. All right, so I don't know if you noticed the terminal position on these. Positive is on this side, negative is on this side on the battery. But in the cart, positive is on this side, negative is on this side. Sure, you could probably, you know, plop it in any other way, but to do that, to have the terminals out here, if you want to keep the wiring orientation in the same position, you would need to get a Group 24F, which has the positive and negative terminals reversed. Um, the, well, the positioning is reversed. So instead of this side of the battery being positive, it would be negative, and this would be positive here. So unfortunately, the way we got to do this is we have to drop this in in reverse, put the terminals underneath this area here. I don't know why Yamaha did that, but that's what they did. For some reason, that's how they felt that it should be done. So that's how we're going to do it. All right, so let's push this rod up in here. I'm going to show you this. This is a really nice little setup here. I like this. This thing goes here. Oop. A little bit hung up there. Here we go. Th this makes me happy that the customer doesn't have to buy a whole new bolt-down kit for these, that this will actually work. Don't normally get that lucky with stuff like this a lot of the times. Downfall is it's hard to grab this. Ow, my hand's stuck. Hard to, hard to grab this back one here because it fell down on the frame. But we'll get it. That's a worry. I like these batteries that have these go handles. These are, these are nice. See the battery tray on this is a little rotted so things are a little funky actually I'm gonna turn that and see if I can lift this up a little higher okay and that'll do we'll drop this in okay now I'm gonna retract my previous statement I don't know if I like this one or this one better or not compared to the factory Yamaha one. I'll tell you in a minute. I mean, I guess you could do this a completely different way before putting, oops, look at that, I even wiped the date off of it. Eh, don't matter. It's on the, I had, I write the date on the batteries when I install them on multiple sides. And it's also marked in the invoice so we know when and where and who, how, what, where, when, why, it, he, she, then, therefore. Yeah, you get it. But things are starting to finally pick up. Or things are, well, I should say, things are starting to finally somewhat, somewhat go back to uh, normal. Not necessarily normal, but there's been some things going on here that I don't really want to talk about too much, but... It has prevented me from getting as far along in my normal routine as I normally would be by this time of year. It's already March. Okay, so that's in. It's not flopping around. That's the important thing. So now what we're going to do is cut this terminal off. I'll cut this ring terminal off. Uh, the electrical that's here already for the cart, we're going to just leave it. Okay, so now for the positive terminal, the positive side is larger than the negative, so the negative will just slip right over, no problem. We'll put this on. I'll tighten that up. I'm probably going to get a ratchet and do that because it's just 
harder to get in here. I should have did this before I put the battery in, but I didn't. Now the positive, because the terminal itself, the post, is actually larger than the negative, that's to prevent you from putting things on wrong, doesn't always work. So I have these terminal splitters, or these terminal pliers, so you basically shove the terminal on there, you squeeze, and you keep sliding it down until you get it as open as you need it. You might have to take the nut off, but sometimes you don't. So you get it nice and wide, and it won't actually hurt the terminal by using that pliers. Then you can get a nice solid bite, just like it was intended, on there. And because the battery's not hooked up to the frame yet or any other electrical, it doesn't matter if you do the negative or the positive first. But if it's hooked up to electrical, then you really want to be doing the positive side first, as long as the ne negative side is elect uh, blah, 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 disconnected. You see me, I hope. Okay. You don't have to go gahunga tight. You just want to be tight enough so it doesn't come loose. All right, unfortunately, I only have one 6 gauge 5 16 ring terminal left. Thankfully, though, these are basically qu quarter, quarter 20s. Crack those loose. And if you guys have ever watched any of my other videos, you know that I like to... Okay, perfect. That'll work. I like to keep the cart, power connectors, cables on different sides of these lugs from like any electrical accessories like lights, light kits or whatever. It's not really required to do that. I just like to do that just for cleanliness, just for my own OCD, I guess. <laughs> Make these cable cutters. I have to attempt to get in here. Hope you can see me. I'm gonna put it on the tip of the solenoid here, and there. We'll cut that off. That's that's lead, so that can go in the gar or go in the not the garbage, but the recycling. I always save all my lead terminals, and I take them to the junkyard when I do a load of, when I do a scrap run. And that's just regular tin steel, so that can go away. See, like this terminal here. Let's see if that's going to actually fit. I think that might be too small. Oh, perfect. Okay, good. Same size. So we don't have to worry about that. And then I'll take a utility knife. Hopefully you guys can see me because I can't see the camera. Cut that off. Nice and clean. I'm going to take the zip tie off of here. We can always put a new one on. I'm going to do this one the same way. Oh, this wire is really short. There we go. I always throw them on the floor. I can sweep them up later. And then I have these really nice uh, anchor crimpers. What did I do with that? Okay, and I'll take this. I'll preload it. Get it started. And then I'll shove the wire in like so. Make sure all the little strands get in there. Okay, and then you gotta usually crimp these a couple of times because the the crimp fingers, the jaws, whatever you wanna call them themselves, are usually not. Okay, that'll work. That's positive. So we could actually hook this side up and be done with it. So I'll take the plate. This is normally where you would clamp the wire, the cable, into here. I don't personally personally like that way of doing it, so I do it this way. This is how I do it. You could do it how you want, your cart. I'm just showing you how I do it. Yeah, and you could put heat shrink over that crimped end if you want, but I typically just do a battery terminal protectant, and that seems to work. It's, it's worked for me really well in the past, so I'm just gonna continue to do it that way. Tighten that down. And because we're doing the positive side, we don't have to worry about touching the frame because the negative isn't even hooked up yet. Okay. So there's that. That side's done. And then we'll... Ch -ch that. Now I'll take our other ring terminal. 
put it in the jaws like so. I gotta stand up and get a different angle on this one. Always try to monitor the orientation of your terminal as well because you don't wanna be trying to twist the wire in ways it's not meant to be twisted, usually. Okay, there's one. And then we'll pull it forward. There we go. Okay, there's that. That's a nice crimp. I am very happy with that, I must say. Okay. And then also with these plates on these terminals, they typically come with the plate with these ridges up. I usually flip them over so that way they don't interfere with tightening down this nut or this bolt rather. Again, that's just me. It's your cart. You can do it how you want to do it. You could do heat shrink on these ends if you want. I find that that just adds a lot more time to something that's almost pointless unless you are really trying to, you know, you can get the stuff with the glue in it and all that crap in it. And it works. It's just, I haven't seen a, any difference because I soak the crap out of this stuff with battery terminal protectant anyway, so I don't see a difference. Okay. Tighten that. Tighten that. Now you're gonna hear a huge difference in how fast this engine's gonna crank over. It'll probably fire right up. First, let's get rid of all this crap here. We don't need it. Okay, so now we got the battery installed. I'm gonna turn the cart key on. We're still in neutral. Everything's tight. So now just listen to the difference the way this thing cranks over. Hear how much faster the engine rolls over? Now I have to tighten up that starter generator belt because that's a bit of an issue. Let's see why this... See if we can figure out what's going on here with this. This isn't. This started up and ran good for me when I first brought it in here. Okay. We might have a, another issue to contend with. Looks like we might have to dive into this carburetor a little bit because it, it did start right up for me when the guy dropped it off. So this is a new issue. Okay, we well, can't test the charging system yet until we get the cart to run. So let's forego that thought right now. I smell gas, so it's... Did we lose spark? Let's see if we lost spark. Before we go too balls deep into this thing here, trying to figure out if there is a problem or if it's just still trying to prime itself because it very well could be. I got this little spark plug tester. Links down in the description to my Amazon thingamajig. Let's see here. That light should blink. Let's turn that light off there. We'll see if we see a blinking. Hmm. It looks like we'll have lost spark, folks. Just to confirm, I'm not losing my marbles. Let's uh, unplug that. I smell gas in here, but one way to test is just take a spark plug, plug it in. Doesn't matter what kind, because you're not running off of it. You're just trying to test to see if you have spark. I'm gonna put it here on that. We're gonna look and see if we have, if this will focus. Okay, unfortunately, my other lens, and my trusty lens, for some reason, manual focus is not working. So we're gonna switch over to this one. And let's see if we can see spark. No, we have no spark. So we lost spark at some point in this repair or we lost, spark was kind of intermittent to begin with, so. Let's see here. What I'm going to do is I'm actually going to 
put this right here and kind of just jiggle you some wires around. It's not in the key switch and it's not in the foot switch because these carts, ah, here we go. <laughs> Wonder how that happened. Well, we're gonna adjust that right now. So the wires go into the ignition coil somehow came unplugged. Interesting. Oh, the clip is broke. That's how they became unplugged. I'm gonna wrap a zip tie around that so that doesn't happen again. It should have spark now, I bet. Yeah, it's not great, but it's there. All right, now it should fire it up. Okay. Tragedy averted, simple repair, just a bad connection. So what I'm gonna go ahead and do is put a zip tie on that plug. I prefer not to do that, but at the same time, it's the easiest fix because it does have to be removable and the plug is on the spark, uh, ignition coil side. So it eventually will need to be replaced because they do fail. I'll be sure to let the customer know that I'm doing this so they are fully aware and you know, it's not gonna be mega tight or anything. This is just to keep it from unplugging. Cause you know, it'll suck. You're going down the road and all of a sudden the cart shuts off and it's like, what the hell? Okay. The liter there's a little tiny tab on the spark plug connector or this ignition coil plug. And the little tiny tab is actually broken. It's still there, but it's broke. So that'll do, that'll hold it. Don't always have to go and start throwing parts at things when something stupid doesn't work. You gotta just remember that. It doesn't always make sense to go ahead and do that. So now, now that we know the engine's running and it fires right up, I mean, after choking it for a while, it sure as hell better. So what we're gonna do now is hook up our battery tester. We know the battery itself is good, but what we wanna do is we wanna test uh, turn that over here so I can see. I can't see anyway. What I want to do is test for charging, make sure the charging system's working. So 12 and a half volts. We're going to do a system test, turn off loads, start engine. This is probably not going to detect any cranking because it's, it's not really. Yeah, see, I have to actually Cranking loads not detected. <laughs> these these small engines are really hard to use this tester on. I know I'm, you're kind of like out of shot here. Uh, charging volts not detected. Press enter for a charging test. Enter. Make sure all loads are off. Idle volts low. Well, that's because we've been cranking on it. Turn on all loads. They're LED headlights, so it's not going to matter. High ripple. 15.19 volts on charge. Okay. okay, so we're not getting very accurate readings with this because of the, the style of charging and starting system that's in this cart. Not every cart reacts this way, but this one is. Um, but the charging system is outputting current, it's outputting voltage. The battery is taking the charge because now it was sitting at 12.6 volts when I unhooked it. So that's good. So that is going to deem our repair complete. So now that we know that's all good, that's, that's good. That's a good thing. I'm glad that was a simple fix. Because, I mean, the, the crappy thing is when you call a customer up and you say, hey, by the way, we replaced your battery, but now we're finding you have no spark. Some people will say, oh, well, it was running fine when I dropped it off. 
and which is very true, but you know, a little problem arose, but thankfully it's just a stupid little connector. And I will, like I said, I will point it out to the customer so they're aware. So I like using this stuff here. This is Max Battery Terminal Protectant, and I soak the crap out of everything with it. Now my complaint about this stuff is it doesn't work very good when the can gets low, it won't actually spray. So it's, when the can is new, you can spray everything until your heart's content. But as soon as it starts getting low, and I'll even give it a little, little squirt in there. I can't get in there, can I? No, I can't. Um, and then I'll step back a bit from it and I'll give it another. I like to soak the hell out of it with this stuff because this stuff works really good at protecting the batteries. Manual focus, still on. So this stuff here, actually works really, really well. I like this stuff. Not a sponsor, uh, but and you can get it at Crappa. Um, but yeah, this stuff works really good. It lasts a long time. When it dries, it turns into almost like a grease, kind of, if that makes sense. I don't know, but it, it does wash off really easily. So if you need to change out the battery in the future, you don't have to worry about dicking around with the Vaseline, because I have customers who put Vaseline on their batteries it works, there's nothing wrong with it, but when you need to change the batteries out and clean everything and put it back together, you could be inviting issues because now you have a layer of film that's non-conductive that you know, you're, creating, you're creating issues if you don't get it all off and not every time can you get it, off, get it all off, so yeah. But anyway, that's that, now that I'm done rumbling. All right, guys, well, that's going to do it for this one. Uh, thanks for coming along and watching this video. As always, I appreciate every single one of you that watch the videos and leave comments below. I really do appreciate you. If you want to help support the channel, you could do that by using my affiliate links below. I do earn a small commission when you use those links, but it doesn't cost you anything extra. And that does kind of silently help you support the channel without really costing anybody any extra money, because I know these days everything sucks. So there's that. But, uh, all right, guys. Well, thanks for watching. I really do appreciate it. Be sure to leave a comment down below if you have any questions. And until next time, we'll see you in the next video.